salt by pressing water. Then leaching, leaching with good quality water, that is either irrigation or rainwater is used for the leaching purpose of the salt. Then drainage, you know that drainage is very, very important for the root growth. If drainage is poor, then there will be poor aeration to the roots and there will be less uptake of the nutrient by the roots and the growth of the crop is stunted or less. So poor drainage condition lead to accumulation of rainwater in a low lying area during rainy season. If it is not drained out properly, the groundwater table is raised to less than two meter within five to 10 years and result accumulation of soil due to evaporation from the surface. So what happened, the water is uh, stagnant on this ground, then water is evaporated, then the salt remain on the surface. So that salt is accumulated on the surface of this soil and which will hinder the growth of the plant. In general, the critical depth of water table ranges between 1.5 to 3 meter to check the salinization. So drainage is necessary to prevent salinization. So if you are not prevent the drainage, so there will be necessary to prevent the salinization. So drainage is required so that there will be no further salinization. Salinization means more accumulation of salt on the surface soil. And you know that we are observing the saline and alkaline soil in the low lane low fall area, like Rajasthan and Kutch area. So what happened in that area, the rainfall is low. So the salt has been not washed out due to rainwater because rainfall is low. So slowly and slowly the water is evaporated and salt accumulated on the soil surface and the crop productivity declined. Then chemical analysis or the chemical method for salt affected soil. So first we have said physical, then say the chemicals. So chemicals methods, nutrient management. So in nutrient management, nitrogen, symbiotic nitrogen fixation, nitrification are inhibited. Use of nitrate fertilizer rather than ammonium nitrogen in split application is better in saline soil. You know that when we are applying the urea or ammonium sulfate in the soil, then it converts into ammonia, then nitrite, nitrate, and plant will take the nitrogen in form of nitrogen and ammonical. Form. But when there is a problem of the high soil pH and more concentration of the salt, then there will be poor aeration. So the growth of the microorganism will be reduced and the process of nitrification will not place. And in absence of the aeration, the denitrification process takes place and nitrogen has been escaped in the atmosphere. Then phosphorus. Higher application of phosphorus fertilizer helps in increase the yield. So I told that the nutrients are present in the soil, but it is not available to the plant due to constraint of the soil. Therefore, we have to apply the phosphatic fertilizer in the soil so that phosphorus is available to the plant and your crop will has been increased. Potassium and micronutrient higher application of this fertilizer help increase the yield. So generally you will find that in problematic soil, saline, alkaline soil, you will find the deficiency of the zinc and iron. They are present in soil, but it is not available. Therefore, when we are applying the zinc sulfate or ferrous sulfate, at the rate of 25 or 50 kg zinc sulfate or ferrous sulfate per hectare respectively, then we can increase the crop productivity. Then third one, biological method for salt affected soil. So organic matter application, it helps to increase water holding capacity of the soil. 
and decrease the conductivity of the soil saturation. Then following, keep the land fallow during the monsoon season so that salt accumulated during the winter season are leached out, making the soil fit to grow next crop. So you know, you know that in a Bali area in saline alkali soil, they in the, during the monsoon season, they stagnate the water and that salt has been laid down and they are grow the wheat and uh, late cotton crop in that area. Then mulching. You know that uh, when we cover the soil with the help of the plastic mulch or grasses or crop stubbles, then it controls evaporation and salinity buildup. Then agronomy practices for salt affected soil. So saline soil. So choice of crops and cropping system. So here you can see that relative tolerance of crop to salinity. So date palm, barley, sugar beets, peen, rapeseed, and cotton are this tolerant crop to saline soil. Then semi-tolerant, pomegranate, wheat, oat, rice, sorghum, maize, and sunflower. So you can see that pomegranate, wheat, then rice, all these are grown successively in a saline soil. So in Tarapur area and in Bal area, they grow the wheat and rice and also sorghum. Then sensitive crop, you can't grow this crop sensitive like citrus, cowpea, ground peas, groundnut, lentil and green gum because they are all sensitive crops. So balia wheat and barley salt tolerant cereal crop. I am located at Anam and from about 70 to 80 kilometers, there will be a Bal area. So in Bal area, they grow the Balia wheat. So I told that it is a salt resistant crop. Similarly, Bal is also salt resistant crops. So Balia crops, they grow Balia wheat, they grow in a winter season. So Balia wheat is grown in saline area, Bal in Gujarat, India, more price, superior quality export in foreign countries. So you remember that when you grow the crops in a saline soil or alkaline soil, then the crop productivity is very low, 1,000, 1,500 kg per hectare due to smaller size of the fruits, either tomato or brinjal and so on. Similarly, the wheat is also low production. But the quality of the wheat, then tomato, then gava are superior because there will be more concentration of salt. I will give one example. Suppose you have normal soil, then you are getting 5,000 kg per hectare wheat crop. But when you have the problematic soils like saline alkali, then you grow the balia wheat or other wheat, then you are getting only 1000 to 1500 kg per hectare. Means here, the, in more yield than the constituent, chemical constituents or nutrient are diluted. So the taste of the that weight is not good as balia weight. Here, the concentration of the nutrients is more in balia weight as compared to wheat grown in normal soil. So here you know that the price of the balia wheat is very great. And the India is exporting the balia wheat to the foreign country. So suppose the normal wheat is about 20, 25 rupees per kg. Here the balia wheat is about 50, 75 rupees per kg. So when the production is low, but we are getting the more price due to higher price of the wheat crop. So I told that barley is also the salt tolerant crop. And you know that in India, Karnal, previously the soil of the Karnal is a better soil. But what happened? They are used the excessive water of irrigation, 
Ganga rivers and Brahmaputra river, they are using plenty of water to the rice and wheat and they have deteriorated the soil and now, now the soil becomes saline and alkali soil. So they are growing the barley crop and wheat crop and also rice crop. You know that the rice crop can be grown in saline soil because the rice crop requires the standing water. And when you fill up this soil standing water, then whatever the soil present in the soil that has been diluted and rice crop has been grown successively in that area, particularly in saline or alkaline soil. Then I told that sorghum and bajra are also soil tolerant crop. So you know that in Rajasthan, bajra has been grown, sorghum has been grown similarly in Kutch area. So you remember that uh, sorghum is a versatile crop you can grow in any type of soil. It is a drought resistant and it requires lesser irrigation water as compared to other crops. So sorghum and bajra you can grow, but you can't grow the maize crop or corn crop in saline alkaline soil. Otherwise, you will get the low crop fertility. You all can also grow the soybean crop <clears throat> in that area. Then we will talk about the horticulture crops <clears throat> in saline area. So mandarin, then pomegranate, then sweet orange has also been grown in saline soils. And you know, then in Kutch area, the farmers are growing the pomegranate and they are fetching very, very more income from that area because the soil is saline, then water is also saline. So the quality of the pomegranate is superior and they are exporting to the foreign country. Similarly, I told that it is a pomegranate you can grow in saline soil. Similarly, papaya also we can grow in a saline soil. Horticulture crop also we can grow in saline soil, mango, banana and grapes. In a Nasik area in India, you know that Nasik, the area grown grapes in more area. Similarly, banana and mango, they are growing although they have this saline water. But saline water is not more dangerous as compared to the, or saline soil is not more problematic as compared to the alkaline soil. In saline soil, the aeration is good, but in alkaline soil, there will be poor 